in the last 10 years, purchasing power per citizen in China has increased by 220%. In the next four years, it's expected to grow by 60%. Let me contrast that with the United States, where growth over the last 10 years in purchasing power was about 33% and is expected to grow at 16% over the next four years. So we're seeing a tripling, quadrupling of opportunity for growth in places like China, like India, Russia, Brazil. And the opportunity for globalization of markets is for us to go out there and get more than our fair share. And when these markets eventually merge and it becomes a single market, for example, as clothing has become on a global basis, when it becomes a single market opportunity, how do we arise and, and, and arrive as market leaders within that economy? That's the question I want to spend time on today. Now, if we look specifically within the BRIC countries at certain opportunities, let me just take one as an example, which is the construction industry. Construction industry is very large, about $160 billion on a global basis. In 2005, 9% of that marketplace was in China. 2010, five years later, 40% of the marketplace for construction equipment was in China. More than a quadrupling, more than a quadrupling of demand in one country over a five-year period. Now, Caterpillar, a wonderfully positioned multinational corporation had played a role in China back in 2005. They sold about 2,500 excavator machines in that year. By 2010, five years later, they were selling 10,000 excavator machines. Their business quadrupled in a five-year period because they were positioned in a market that was going to grow so rapidly. Morgan Stanley reported that last year, Caterpillar's business in China grew another 50% even though the marketplace in China last year only grew at about 29%. So being positioned in these BRIC countries, in these fast growth markets, aggressively positioned as a market leader can lead to substantial opportunities. So we have on the one side the threat of what happens to our domestic marketplaces as the doors open and foreign competition is able to fully avail themselves of the opportunity in our market. And on the other side of the coin, we have the enormous opportunity of invading parts of the world far more aggressively where we're seeing much faster growth than we're seeing in the United States. So it's a two-headed coin, this issue of globalization. But let me take the construction example a little further. It might surprise a lot of people to know that of the 10 largest construction companies in the world today making construction equipment, three of them are in fact Chinese, with the leading one being Sani. Two other companies are from uh, Korea uh, and Japan. And so only half of the companies in the construction industry today are European or American companies, large companies in that industry. The Chinese have already built a foothold, and while Caterpillar grew 52% in 2011 in, in that market in China, Sani grew 100% and is growing at the fastest rate of any construction company on Earth. So it's a two-headed coin again. While these markets are growing quickly, they're also feeding the development and growth of indigenous upstarts that are going to be significant contenders at the table for market leadership as these markets fully globalize.